Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do an early impression on a Papillon fragrance. And you know this brand is a house and a brand that I am truly in love with. Uh, everything I've smelled from them is quality. Everything I've smelled is bottle worthy. Every single one. There's nothing that Liz Moore's has put out that is a throwaway fragrance. Everything deserves attention and it's worth it. Um, even if you knew nothing about the brand, even if you knew nothing about Liz Moore's, if all you did was close your eyes and smell, this brand is an enchanting brand that to me um, is a high value for money niche brand, which nowadays is a rarity. And this is actually one of the expensive fragrances because this is an extra de parfum. Not all her fragrances are extras. Many of them are eau de parfums. And this is her newest offering from this year, 2022. Another new fragrance on Channel Ram. Who would have thought? Uh, and this is called Hera. Okay, so this is Hera. There's the beautiful bottle. Uh, and there is the note listing if you want to pause and take a look. And um, the name. Let's start with the name. Actually, let's start with something else because there is something I wanted to talk to you guys about that's not fragrance related. Well, it sort of is, but it's something that I started to do recently and it's helped significantly. Uh, this is not a sponsorship at all, by any chance. Uh, this, There's no way that a company as large as this would pay a tiny little YouTube channel like me. And, and if they did, I would tell you guys about it. Uh, but this is just something that I started to do that's been working, and I figured I would share it with you guys, especially since, you know, at least in Texas, it's kind of like allergy season. And so I know in the old days, they used to have this thing called like a Yeti pot or something where you would like... Um, I don't know, squeeze it in your nose and water would come out. And it would just be like this little, you know, uh, piece of plastic with a rubber thing on the end, uh, a nozzle, and you would just squeeze it yourself. Well, now they have this. And so this is called Navage. And um, it actually is like battery powered. So it cycles through your na nasal cavities. And I'll tell you what, I have never had uh, the ability to smell so clearly. So... If you watch my uh, channel, if you go to the very beginning of the just sort by oldest to newest videos, go to the oldest videos and watch some of those very old videos. Well, first, try not to laugh at me, but uh, second, you'll notice that the very early videos, I had a bandage on my nose because I actually had nose surgery about 10 months ago. And that nose surgery was to fix a deviated septum. I, I always had like one side that was constantly clogged. So that opened it up a bit. And now that I've been using this, it opened it up even more. Um, and so I'm a big fan. This is like 95 bucks on Amazon, but for a fragrance lover, when you want your nostrils to be clear and your sinuses to be you know, clear and be able to smell, um, I'm a big fan of that Navage thing. Amazing. Uh, so anyways, let's get to the fragrance. Just a little side note. If you have an Amazon Prime account or something, it'll be at your door the next day for 95 bucks. As a fragrance lover, I mean, what a great way to really be able to smell and experience your, your fragrances. So, um, okay, so let's talk about the fragrance. Let's talk about the name first because this fragrance is very interesting in that it is a fragrance that she created for her daughter, her eldest daughter, uh, who just recently got married uh, this year, I believe. And if you haven't watched my Liz Moore's interview, I would highly encourage you to go do that. Number one, she is an amazing creator. Uh, number two, the interview was amazing. Um, and number three, she talked about some of her fragrances and the ideas and, and the creation process and all that stuff. And one of the fragrances she mentioned was Hera, basically the story behind Hera is that her daughter was getting married and she was lucky enough to create her wedding scent. And she said that her daughter really saved it for her wedding day. You know, she didn't wear it before. Um, and, uh, you know, with the COVID lockdown, it gave her, it gave Liz Moore's more time to create the fragrance because initially they were supposed to have the wedding years ago, but it got pushed back. And, and so long story short is she was uh, grateful because it gave her more time to work on the fragrance. It wasn't ready in 2020. And so, um, out grew Hera. Now, let's talk about the name, because Hera, interestingly enough, if you're not familiar with uh, old uh, Roman mythology, uh, or Greek mythology, it is um, 
Hera is the wife of Zeus, okay? So Hera is the wife of Zeus. And here's this little story I found online. It says, what was Zeus and Hera's relationship like? It says, uh, the story of Zeus and Hera isn't your conventional love story. Zeus was notorious for courting countless women, but it was Hera, the goddess of marriage, with whom he was enchanted. He wanted to have her by his side as the queen of the gods as he ruled over the universe. Hera, however, had no intention of ever becoming Zeus's wife. She rejected all the marriage proposals she had received from him. Nevertheless, he was relentless and formulated a plan that would see Hera soften her, soften her stance, her hard stance. One day, Zeus transformed himself into a rain-soaked, helpless little bird whose sight was enough to melt even the iciest of hearts. When Hera saw the little bird, she took pity on it. She took the little creature and nestled it into her bosom to dry it and give it warmth. At that moment, Zeus transformed back into his true form and Hera couldn't help it. She fell in love with him. This time, when he asked her to be his wife, she obliged. That marked the beginning of a vicious cycle of lust, infidelity, jealousy, and vengeance that would be the cornerstone of their relationship. And you can continue to kind of read on, you know, the he was he cheated on her many a times. Uh, he was a womanizer. They had like god wars in, in the little mythology, if you will. And they had children, one of which was um, Ares, the god of war, if you played the PlayStation game God of War, you, you, uh, I think you know Ares, um, and they had the goddess of childbirth and then also the goddess of youth. And, um, it's interesting though that she named it Hera. Um, obviously Zeus is, is like the king of the gods, if you will. So to be married to, to Zeus is a, is a big deal, but, uh, Hera you know, didn't just sit back and take this. If you continue to read on, they kind of had like a godlike war. And, uh, but it's interesting that this toxic warfare, this, um, uh, all the wrath that ended up coming from the marriage of these two is what Liz Moore's decided to name a fragrance for her first daughter's marriage. Uh, but I love it. I love the whole story and aesthetic behind it and all that good stuff. Um, so let's talk about the fragrance itself. Let's talk about what is Hera. Now, Hera uh, is, at its heart, is a beautiful interpretation of an iris with ambrette, okay? Oh, and I'll tell you what, I mean, just to give you um, kind of where I'm coming from. For those of you who have watched my channel, you've seen this. Russian Adam sent me these individual ingredients. One of the most amazing ingredients he sent me outside of all the beautiful oud distiller, distilled, you know, uh, products that he sent me was this. This is Oris at 80% irones. And if you watched my Francesca Bianchi early impression of uh, Under My Skin, I read the little blurb that Francesca Bianchi put on her website. And it said something along the lines of, Oris Irones, and at 15% Irones, you know, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And I kind of chuckled a little bit, which that is high. 15, 20% is usually what, what you go for. 80% Irones is like mind blowing. So I say that to say I have smelled some of the best Iris on earth and I'm blessed to be able to do that. I'm not, I'm not holding it over your head as me being some sort of figurehead or anything like that. I'm not claiming to be an authority on it. I'm just saying that I have been blessed and lucky enough to have gotten my nose on some of the best iris, oris, uh, the world has seen, thanks to Russian Adam. And um, this fragrance, Hera, is one of the best iris fragrances I've ever smelled. Okay, I'm going to tell you that right up at the very front. There's no need for me to hide it. Uh, it is full bottle worthy, even though this was made for her daughter. And if you, if you look at the note breakdown... Sorry, not the note breakdown. If you look at the um, breakdown of who owns this on Parfumo... It's something like, you know, 63% of the owners are women, 38% are men. And that's to be expected because of the story behind it. But this is completely unisex to me, 100% unisex. Uh, and uh, what it starts out with, what makes it so amazing is it just starts off just bam with the most beautiful Oris Butter iris, oris butter, whatever you want to call it that you've smelled. I mean, it's just right there in your face. First thing, bam, out of the gate. 
and there's a little touch of orange blossom, but it's not soapy. I did a soapy fragrance uh, video recently. This was not included because the orange blossom here is just used as kind of a opening salvo, if you will, uh, with, with bergamot. That's used as kind of an opening salvo, if you will. Uh, and then, uh, even though am ambrette, which, by the way, if you've ever smelled stuff like Bois d'Argent, this fragrance and then the ensuing Dior Homme are the most, this is the silver stem Dior Homme from 2005, one of my favorite iris fragrances of all time, and I know people say, oh, but it's not high class iris, it's not this, it's not that, I don't care, I just love this fragrance so much. Uh, and the, the bedrock of the Dior Homme DNA is two notes. It's Ambrette and it's Iris. And those two notes are in Hera. Those are actually probably two of the most prominent notes, okay? Uh, it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, if money was no issue, I would just buy every single Papillon fragrance, honestly. I would just go buy them all because they're all well worth it. Uh, and if you don't know the story behind Bois d'Argent, though, this was formed in 2004 by Anique Minardo, and then they ended up doing Dior Homme in 2005, one year later, off of the foundation that Bois d'Argent set. Uh, and so, um, uh, I just absolutely love it. Now, they go about it differently, though, and I'll try to explain some of the differences, but if you like Dior Ohm, okay? If this is something that really appeals to you, the Dior Ohm DNA, then I would say Hera is a must sniff. Just right out and out. Put it out right there at the beginning. Uh, and what's interesting is if you read some of the reviews on, on Hera, um, you will hear folks uh, compare it to, um, you know, you will hear folks compare it to her other fragrances. Like, for example, she did a fragrance, um, if you go to Fragrantica, which I hardly ever do, but I did this time because I was interested. Uh, there's a fragrance that she did, which is a, it's a green um, chifra called Dryad. And Dryad is what many people compare Hera to. Now, I have not done a video on Dryad yet, but I have smelled it. And I don't think there's any similarity except for the fact that it has a Narcissus and, and um, uh, Rose and Iris combination. But the rest of that fragrance is completely different to me. There's Galbanum, which I don't think there's any Galbanum in Hera. Um, and it dries, it dries down to more of a classical Shifra fragrance. This is completely different to me. This is more focused on... Um, the Ambrette Iris combo and the Narcissus is a flower that really does kind of shine through here. It's a very important flower in this creation, uh, the daffodil. And basically what it ends up giving you is it comes across as extremely dark green, which kind of sounds weird because if you look at a picture of a daffodil or a Narcissus, um, they can be white, they can be yellow. Uh, but you wouldn't expect it to come across as green, but it does. It comes across as very green. Well, I should I should take a step back. That's my guess. My guess is that it's the Narcissus that's coming across as very green. The Narcissus in this, in Hera, reminded me of the Narcissus in another very popular fragrance, and that is Val de Nuit. So I, I sprayed some on a card earlier today, and I've been kind of playing with Val de Nuit and, and comparing it kind of back and forth. And the fragrances are completely different. Um, Val de Nuit is much more green, and of course it has that Guerlain in the base where Hera doesn't. But Hera does have this vanilla base, I should say. So even though it doesn't have a Guerlain Accord, I think if you added a Guerlain Accord to Hera, you would have an instant classic Guerlain, honestly, in my opinion. But um, just trying to isolate the Narcissus Accord here, they are they those notes are will kind of remind you of one another. Um, 
Oh, but it's so it's so damn good. Um, the the thing about the Narcissus Accord is it does come across as very dark green, surprisingly. And that that's my guess of where the green note's coming from because there is this slight green accord that's not listed at all anywhere. There's no the note listing says jasmine, orange blossom, ambrette, may rose, Turkish rose. Iris, Narcissus, Elang, Heliotrope, Clary Sage, Bergamot, Vanilla, Labdanum, Musk. Okay, that's the breakdown. No uh, green, real green notes. No Galbanum listed, nothing like that. Um, and if you've ever smelled Narcissus, it basically is this very heady floral that um, can smell like a mixture of jasmine and um, hyacinth. Okay, so that's many a times how narcissus is described and i would say if you're somebody who does not like florals if you're someone that the idea of florals you know turns your stomach or it's like you're like no way no how this is the fragrance for you to try this this papillon hera because the way that she has blended the i mean just the absolute beauty of the iris one of the most she uses iris i think um, I would say if I had one perfumer to create an iris perfume for me right now, if I was going to create my own line like Eugene did, it would be Liz Moore's because somehow she uses the iris accord in a way that is just absolutely mind blowing. I mean, just stunning. It stops you in your tracks. It's so beautiful. Um, oh my God. And, um, I mean, this this review, this early impression might just be me sitting up here ooing and eyeing, but I will tell you it is very good, okay? And I'm not just saying that because she came on my channel. Um, this is very, very good. Maybe one of the best uh, releases of 2022 uh, as far as new releases go, along with uh, Eugene's fragrance, La Dallaire Exquise. And, um, but, but for me personally... Um, the that bitter, deep, heady, somewhat green, um, you know, jasmine slash honeyed hyacinth accord that the narcissus gives off is expertly used here. Absolutely expertly used. And it begins to blend with that very slight orange blossom, big ambrette which is usually a base note, uh, and Brett's usually a base note. We'll talk about that a little bit more as the review goes on, uh, but it it um, it blends with the iris and the ambrette and the uh, very slight bergamot opening, just to give you kind of that, you know, a little bit of freshness in the opening before it just dives into this uh, buttery oris, if you will, which is stunning. <sighs> It is. I mean, if you're an iris lover, if you love stuff like uh, Hades, okay, if you love stuff like this, I I would almost say Hera is a must sniff. A must sniff. Keep, you know, if the fact that it was made for a woman's wedding date puts you off, just completely forget about that story. Just forget about it. Think more of Dior own, okay? Because probably... Uh, and I see it compared to a lot of fragrances, and I've read a lot of the reviews, and maybe because it was tied, maybe because the whole idea of the fragrance is that it was for a woman's wedding day, women tried it, and men didn't give it a chance, um, or maybe it's because it's so new, maybe it's because it's more expensive than her regular line, uh, which Hera is a little bit more expensive, it's like 75 or 100 bucks more expensive, I read, I haven't uh, priced it out, but it is an extra, so I could I could see that. Um, but if you're a guy and you like something like Dior Homme, uh, Hera is that's the way that I would think of Hera because it really is in this ballpark. But imagine Liz Moore's does Dior Homme, okay, uh, with her ability to use Iris, which maybe the Iris is higher quality than what they than what Dior was using. I don't know. Um, that I'm not privy to that kind of information. My guess is it very well might be since I know, uh, Liz Moores is one of the few perfumers who, you know, is still using really good ingredients. That's something Russian Adam told me when we were chatting once. And I think he's spot on. He said, she's one of the good ones left. And I think he's exactly correct. 
And so the next thing is the jasmine. And jasmine can be a very uh, polarizing note, okay? Excuse me. So jasmine can be a very polarizing note. Some people absolutely love it. Some people despise jasmine. Some people hate jasmine with a passion. And, um, you know, I know someone like Rich Mitch once told me that white flowers in general, which jasmine is lumped into those white flowers, uh, remind him of death because that's the kind of stuff that you'd see at funerals and stuff like that. And I completely understand that. Um, I think in Japan they give like the chrysanthemum flower and I, I understand that thought process. But here, while the jasmine is still indolic, and reading the comments on Fragrantica, which I normally don't do, okay, I normally just stay away from Fragrantica altogether, um, some of the reviews were saying that the jasmine is so indolic it's impossible to wear. That is a complete fabrication. There is nothing less further than the truth to me. Uh, because when the when the focus is on the white flowers, okay, I can I could see that. I could see the focus on the white flowers maybe being super indolic, but the focus is not on the jasmine here. Remember, the focus is on the ambrette and the iris. Those are the two main notes to my nose. Ambrette and iris, and everything else kind of plays around. It 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 um, rotates around that Iris and Brett combo that, that she used so beautifully here. And so while there is an indolic Jasmine, and while my nose does pick up some, a slight bit of indoles, and scientists don't know exactly why white flowers are so indolic, but one of the reasons they think that it's possibly true is because they think bees are colorblind, and so the white flowers have a harder time standing out against a colorblind, for a colorblind bee, that they use the heavy smell of the in, in, indolic, um, the indolic smell of their flowers to help attract the bee saying, here I am. It's kind of like a alarm for the bee. Hey, come pollinate me, that kind of thing. Whereas the other flowers stand out a little bit more because bees can't see certain colors. Um, but the brighter flowers, of course, compete for the bee's attention. White flowers use that extremely heavy, extremely powerful smell. Uh, that's why they can come across as so indolic. And sometimes indoles can smell fecal. And that goes down an entire different rabbit hole. Here, it does smell slightly indolic. But it's so, um, you know, it's so overshadowed by the beauty of the iris and the embret that it stays in the background for me. It never comes out and just goes full indolic white flower. It's there, but it's it's in the periphery. You know, it's like I can kind of see what else is going on in this room, but I'm not looking at it. It's in the periphery of your vision. Uh, that's how the jasmine is in this fragrance to me. Uh, and what ends up happening is this um, beautiful resinous base. So I mentioned labdanum and vanilla plays a role. The bass notes kind of seep up from the bottom and they work with the ambrette and the iris to offset some of the stronger indolic features of the jasmine, if that makes sense. Uh, and that makes it so wearable because basically what she did is she took this bouquet um, and she took this bouquet of flowers. So I mentioned Ylang Ylang, Narcissus, Irish, Iris, Turkish Rose, Heliotrope, May Rose. Okay, six flowers. And what's amazing is even though there is a slight sweetness here, it smells like you're smelling the most natural sweetness for each note that you smell, if that makes sense. So if it if you're smelling it and it smells like you're smelling like a rose jasmine, sweet. It smells like you're smelling something nature intended rose or jasmine to smell like. It doesn't smell like synthetic ethyl maltol. Uh, if you're smelling the Narcissus with that deep green, um, heady, you know, jasmine, honeyed, hyacinth feel, it smells like that's how nature intended a little bit of sweetness with that note to be. 
you know, if you're smelling the rose, it smells like that's how nature intended it to be. If you're smelling the elaine, the sweetness there, it smells like that's how nature intended it to be. And finally, um, as the hours tick by, heliotrope is what I think adds one of the hidden, um, you know, one of the uh, hidden weapons of this fragrance to me is heliotrope. And the reason I say that is that heliotrope, um, heliotrope expertly prolongs this iris note, okay? And so iris, um, has that powdery, um, you know, vegetal, sometimes earthy, sometimes rooty, uh, but... It's one of the most beautiful smells I've ever smelled in my life. I love iris. I'm a huge fan of iris. Anything with iris, give it to me. You know, I want to smell it. And um, heliotrope has this spongy, almondy, uh, almost like you took one of those, um, one of those mattresses that uh, was famous a decade ago. I forget what they were called. Those, uh, oh man, I even have one and I can't remember what it was called. Um, but, uh, you know, one of those, like, um, mattresses where you push it together and it kind of pops right back. It's like this special kind of foam. I don't know what they call it. Can't remember now. But, um, imagine that you took a piece of Play-Doh and pushed it together. Or you, you kind of tried to squish a mattress and then it kind of popped back into place. That's a little bit of the vibe that Heliotrope gives to me. And here, here, it is used to prolong that iris. And what it does is it adds this texture. And the texture of this fragrance to me is one of the most beautiful parts of it. It's, it's actually my favorite part. Actually, my, the texture is my favorite part of this fragrance because um, when you're smelling it, what it feels like you're smelling is it feels like you're smelling, um, it feels like you're smelling real orris butter. So I once watched a show uh, and they went into the Guerlain facility and this was probably 10 or 15 years ago and they were making Shalimar. And it was showing the, the lab tech measuring the exact amount of orris butter, which is an extremely expensive ingredient. And when you're using it by the kilo or whatever they're doing, you know, you have to make sure that you use the correct amount in this huge vat that was mixing Shalimar. And um, looking at that Oris butter, you know, and the the thickness, imagine, forget Oris butter, but just imagine what a hard stick of butter kind of looks like. And you, you let it melt on the table a little bit where it gets soft, where a knife can just kind of cut right through it. And that kind of texture is what this fragrance feels like to me. Or imagine two newlyweds and one of them takes a piece of cake and slaps it on the other one's face, you know, and you get the the frosting or whatever it is from the cake on their face, right? That that thick texture is what this smells like. Um, and I recently reviewed a fragrance with a beautiful orris butter note. It was called Under My Skin by uh, Francesca Bianchi. And... Um, I, I would say that while that was nice, I think that Liz Moore's annihilates Francesca Bianchi's fragrance to me, personally. Um, I would buy, if I was going to spend my hard-earned money, I would buy this. Even though it's much more expensive, I think this is a much better fragrance than Under My Skin. Plus, there are some other fragrances like Under My Skin, so I mentioned... Um, you know, I mentioned a couple in that video. Bala Versailles Parfum was one. Um, and I mentioned um, Salome, which happened to be a Liz Moore's, which I think is even better than Under My Skin. But um, for this, for, for Papillon's Hera, there's really nothing like this. I mean, Dior Homme is probably the closest. In my opinion, this is probably the closest. But this does... Um, this does many different things, uh, which Dior Om uses cacao. There's no cacao in Hera. Dior Om uses, uh, lavender. There's no lavender in Hera. Dior Om uses sage. There's no sage in Hera. 
Uh, it uses cardamom. There's no cardamom in, in Hera. It uses vetiver, patchouli, and leather. There's no vetiver, patchouli, and leather in Hera. But, but, there is that beautiful ambrette in the base. And ambrette uh, can sometimes give off this, which by the way, if you don't know, ambrette is a ingredient also known as musk mallow that is actually extracted from the hibiscus flower. And that extraction method, it mostly it comes from India. The hibiscus mostly grows in, in India. And um, so it's extracted from the hibiscus and it used to be used as a musk replacement back in the day. So they used to use ambrette to replace musk. But now what ended up happening is it became very expensive to use. And plus with the invention of synthetic musk, they didn't have to use ambrette, right? And so ambrette is like a choice a perfumer has to use. They wanna spend the extra money and get this very unique smell? Or do they just wanna go with these synthetic musks? And here there's probably both. There's a little bit of the synthetic musk and there's that ambrette. And the ambrette will come across as, um, uh, which by the way, like I said, it's not an expensive, it's, it's a very expensive ingredient for them to use. So it has to be a choice. And the ambrette will sometimes come across as smelling a bit uh, like alcohol or some say cognac and tobacco. So there are these slight tobacco nuances, which if you read some of the reviews, you'll hear some people say, ah, there's this cigarette smoke note in here, this, you know, cabochard, Aramis-like tobacco note in here. There's not. It's ambrette is what's giving them that vibe. And, um, and the ambrette uh, can also smell leathery, okay? Leathery, a little bit leathery in the base. Uh, and it can also have a slight animalic nuance. And that's the reason why it was such a good uh, replacement for musk, is because it had this strange animalic, it smelled like musk, in a, in a sense. Uh, and it's usually used in the base. And so if you think about this ambrette in the base, it can come across as boozy and tobacco-y, smoky. Very celebratory, right, for a for a um, wedding fragrance. It makes perfect sense to have this kind of celebratory vibe. And then, you know, that's the base, the celebratory vibe. And on top of it, you have just the most stunningly beautiful. I mean, like you would imagine looking at your bride for the very first time, right? Just the most stunningly beautiful iris. I mean, take your breath away. Beautiful iris on top. And that is... That's the journey of the fragrance. Um, and every single Papillon fragrance that I have smelled goes in this, you know, I, I recently did a review on Angelique. You can go watch that video. I really enjoyed it. I think I enjoy this even more. But Angelique was an, was an important video for me to do because it showcased Liz Moore's use of iris even back then. That iris um, skill that she has, that she showcased in Angelique, comes to the forefront even more in Hera, okay? This, to me, people compare it to um, the Shifra Green fragrance I can never remember the name of. I have to keep looking up. Um, Dryad. It's not like Dryad to me. This is much more like an extension of Angelique. But Angelique uh, did not have, um, Angelique did not have Ambrette. Uh, it did not have Narcissus. It used Osmanthus and it used Mimosa. And it was a little bit lighter. It didn't have the resinous base. This has that labdanum vanilla resinous musk base in, in, the, in the base with the Ambrette. Um, and if I was going to pick one, I would pick Hera. Okay, that, that's the way that I would put it. But Angelique was a very important fragrance for me to, to get to know because it really showed the progress of Liz Moore's and how she, you know, has matured in her fragrance uh, producing capacity, if you will. Um, and, you know, creating this consistency of the fragrance, the, the texture of the fragrance is a... I, I'm in love. I mean, I'm in love with this fragrance. I absolutely adore it. I love it. I would love to get a full bottle one day. It's on the full bottle list. Unfortunately, 
all of her fragrances are on the full bottle list. They're all worthy. Um, but this is one that, you know, I want, they're all staring at me too, because I feel like I should do videos on them because they are all so good. And I feel like as far as value for money goes, you know, something like this, um, you get a much better value from the house of Papillon pound for pound than you do with some of the other niche houses. And I love the fact that she just kind of does her own thing. You know, she's not out there trying to follow the trends. She is um, in her creative space, creating what she wants to create. And we, the consumers, have to either get along with it or not. And I think a lot of people are very impressed by what she's doing. I know I am. Uh, so I hope to have you on again one day, Liz Morris. If you ever do get a chance to watch this, uh, I hope you have uh, approved of my review. I hope you think I did a good job on it. If you have anything to add, I would love to see it in the comments below. And uh, those vintage masculine samples I sent you, I would love to hear your thoughts on those one day too. But uh, if you guys have experienced Hera, do let me know. Let me know if you see the connection between Dior Homme. Let me know if you see the connection between Angelique, the Iris and Angelique, and uh, what your thoughts are. If you love it, if you hate it, if you think it's a, a fantastic wedding fragrance, what you think of the brand. I love reading and hearing about your comments below. And um, thanks to everybody who watches and subscribes and all that good stuff I say every episode. It really is appreciated, uh, even though I don't always, um, you know... I don't, I don't get up here and say, hey, like and subscribe and all that stuff. I promise you I do really appreciate it. I look at all that stuff. We're going to hit 2,000 subs very soon, which is insane to me that someone who has zero YouTube, you know, editing skills, who just, all I can do is t hit start and hit stop on a camera would have 2,000 subs. But uh, it, it does goes to show that it's about the content. It's not about the fancy graphics. It's not about, you know, any of that stuff. It's, it's about the content. And you don't have to be on some big perfume house's payroll to do these videos. You can get samples. You can, you know, you can uh, find, um, you can find good deals. Some of the vintage fragrances that are out there are not super expensive. You know, the ones that aren't hyped, you can, you can get your journey uh, rolling by other means than uh, having your hand out, asking for brands to send you free stuff. And what and if you've been following my journey, one thing you may notice is it wasn't the brands that ended up sending stuff to me. It was you guys. It was it was fellow fragrance lovers who said, hey man, I think you would really enjoy this or that. Or uh, the kindness from the community has been unrivaled. And so thank you very much to everybody. Um, very much appreciate the support. I hope you guys like this video and cheers. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye guys.